Okay, so now I'm gonna do a trust analysis question and we're gonna do part one then part two for the same trust. So we're told for the trust shown in the figure, the force in kilonewtons in member BE is most nearly what? So we're looking at what force, what member? So BE is going to be this member. So we're looking at the internal force in BE. We're trying to find that. That's the end goal here. So we know we need to find that. And I propose here that we're going to make a cut through all the three members. We're not just going to cut this member. You have to make sure to make your cut through all the three members. And this will allow us to expose the force in member BE. So we make our cut. After we do that, we're going to have this force here, this force, and this force. This is the force in EF. This is the force in BE or EB. It does not matter the orientation. or, And this is the force in CB. So we're going to solve for the force in member BE. And making that cut exposes the top portion of the truss and the bottom. I'm going to solely look at the top portion because... The bottom portion, I realize we're going to have reactions. And I can simply ignore solving for the reaction. Ignore these reactions by solely looking at the top portion. So that's what we're going to do. We're only going to analyze the top portion of the truss. So if we do that and draw the free body diagram of the top portion of the truss, we know we have this is our point D. We're going to have this as point E. So this is E, this is D, and I come down here, I close out this triangle, this is going to be point C, at C we know we have the 10 kilonewtons, at D we know we have the 5 kilonewtons, and at E we know we have this 5 kilonewtons acting down, then I'm going to denote the cut here, this is our cut right, in the figure, you look at the figure I'll just denote the cut and if I expose these we're gonna have this member Let me use black for that this is our member CB this is my member B B E which is what we're gonna solve for and this is my member EF E F and here we know this is gonna be my point B and this is my point F so that's all that's done there and we just showed the free body diagram again for the top portion I'm only looking at this top portion here we included this 10 we included the 5 we included this 5 we have the member BE, CB, and EF. We're solving again for member BE. And the way we can arrive at that, if you examine what's happening here, I realize this member CB acts in the Y, this member EF acts in the Y, and we know the values for all of these. Since both of these act in the Y and they're both unknown, this tells me that I can take the summation of the forces in the X and solve for BE. So if I take, because that would be the only unknown component in the X, the component for BE in the X. So if we do just that, we can sum the forces in the X must equal to zero. And we know going to the right is gonna be positive. So let's throw these in the equation. This is the five kilonewtons. So it's gonna be positive five kilonewtons, right? This is, we're going to add the 10 kilonewtons. It's going to be positive 10 kilonewtons. And for B, it's going to have an X component, right? And I'll break down the X component and I'll denote it here. So this is our B, E, X. And B, E, X is going to the left. So it's going to be minus my B, E, X. And this must equal to zero. So we do the 5 plus 10 is 15, right? We have 15 kilonewtons. 
and BEX, if we do the triangle, here we can use our Sokotoa. I'll call this the angle here, and we know it's going to be 45 degrees. Why is it 45 degrees here? So it's going to be the same as this angle, right? And we know this is a 4, and this is a 4. So the base is 4 meters. The height is 4 meters. So this is 4 meters. So if you do the opposite over adjacent to solve for this angle. So solving for this angle, you do the opposite over adjacent, tan inverse. The opposite is 4 meters. The adjacent is 4 meters. And you can solve for the angle and we get 45 degrees. So this angle must be 45 degrees. So I'll denote that here that this angle is 45 degrees. So BEX, the component, it's going to be negative. My member, the magnitude, BE, cosine, it's going to be cosine of 45 degrees. That's, we're simply breaking down the component there. Equals to zero. Now we can solve for the member BE, doing our math, and I got around 21.2 kilonewtons and it's positive that means it's in tension as we've assumed we got a positive answer so it's going to be in tension so it's going to be this answer and based on that it's going to be d so that's part one for part two for the trust shown in the figure the force in kilonewton and remember ef is most nearly what so now we're trying to solve for this ef so we do the same process and we're going to be looking at the same free body diagram. The only difference here is we're solving for EF. And I can solve for EF in this case by doing what? We can solve for EF if you think about it by taking the moment about B. So we can take the moment about B. Why? So if I take the moment about B, about point B, I know this member BE would go away, this member CB would go away, and my only unknown would be EF. We have values for these. These are all known, the external applied forces. So it's going to be, the only unknown is going to be EF, so we'll do just that. We take the moment about B, and we're assuming counterclockwise is positive, all of this must equal to zero, and it's going to be, I'm going to use this one first, the 5 kilonewtons, so it's going to be the negative 5 kilonewtons, it goes clockwise, it causes a clockwise rotation, and the moment arm here is going to be 8 meters. Why is it 8 meters? So this is the 5 kilonewtons, and this is point B. So the moment arm is going to be the 4 plus 4. The force is in the X, the moment arm must be in the Y, so it must be this distance. So to point B. So it's going to be the 4 plus 4, which is 8 meters. So plug in 8 meters here. And I'm going to denote this. This is 4 meters. This is 4 meters. That dimension there. And we know that now I'm going to look at the, this. It's going to be negative 10 kilonewtons. It causes a clockwise rotation about point B. This 10 kilonewtons hits it this way, and it would rotate clockwise, right? So it's negative. And the moment arm there is going to be the 4 meters. Then we're going to have this component now. And it would cause what kind of rotation? It's going to be clockwise, right? About point B. And the moment arm there is going to be this distance. So if the force is in the Y, the distance is going to be in the X. That's the perpendicular distance. So that's going to be the 4 meters. It's just the width of the truss. So it's going to be 4 meters, so it's going to be negative 5 kilonewtons times 4 meters. And the last thing we have to add is going to be this EF. This EF, we assume it's in tension, and we know it would cause a clockwise rotation about B, right? This member would cause a clockwise rotation. So it's going to be negative, and the moment arm is this distance to point B, which is still the 4 meters. So we do minus EF times 4 meters. All of this must equal to 0. 
So now we can do our math and simply solve for EF and we get around 25, negative 25 kilonewtons and this negative just tells us it's actually in compression. So we drew it in tension, it just means EF is actually in that direction in compression. There's compression in that member, specifically member EF. And our answer choice for that one should be A. I hope this helps and if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one tutoring, just reach out to me and don't forget to subscribe and like. Take care.